All right, you guys, we are almost done with the whole school year. This is the second to last video lecture, so you're almost, almost there. And I can tell you that I think these last two lectures uh, might be some of the easier ones. So that's hopefully good news. You need a graphing calculator today. Scientific calculators will also do matrices. I'm just going to demo on a graphing calculator so you can follow along. Um, and yeah, let's get started. So we're using calculators today with matrices and hopefully it's a little bit easier, you'll see, than um, doing that row echelon form to solve a system of equations. So we're looking at just using our calculators, nothing super hard, not a whole lot of work to show. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna enter all four of these matrices on the handout into our graphing calculator. In the middle, you guys will see my key press history so you can see what keys I'm pressing to get to where we need to go on the calculator but uh, I'll walk you guys through it and email me if you've got questions. So first thing we need to do is we need to get to the matrix menu. You're gonna hit the second button and then you're gonna go down to right above X squared is that X to the negative one and that gives us the matrix option. We're gonna edit these matrices first. So you have to go all the way over to the right to that edit menu and then the first one we wanna edit is matrix A. So I'm gonna hit enter. Now when we get into this matrix A, if we look at the handout is a two by three. There's two columns excuse me, two rows, three columns. So I'm gonna hit two, enter, three, enter, and that creates now a two by three matrix where we can put things in. So we're gonna do the top row first, one, enter, two, enter, three, enter, and then that'll give us the second row after that. So two, negative four, and five are gonna be my entries for the bottom. Matrix A is good to go, so I'm gonna go back to the matrix menu, go all the way over to edit and go down and we're gonna edit matrix B. So B is a two by two matrix, two rows, two columns, one and two are the top row, negative two and four are the bottom row. So matrix B is done, I'm gonna do C and D and then I'll be right back. So pause this, do C and D, and then we'll start working with these matrices. All right, I have entered all of my matrices, A, B, C, D, in, um, and now I've gone back to my home screen. So you can do second mode. Second mode gets you quit. It exits out of everything. This is the screen where you do all your computations. All right, first thing on the handout, we want to use the calculator to add B and C. Now B and C we can add together because they're the same size. This one, honestly, it might be easier to and faster to do it by hand, but if we're doing it with the calculator, you're going to go back to the matrix menu. This time we're not going to edit. We just want to get matrix B, and I'm going to add to that matrix C. So I'm just using the numbers to select them so I don't have to go down every single time. B plus C, hit enter, gets you that matrix 2, 7, negative 1, and 6. We're just going to write that down, and we're going to move on. So question number three asks us to take matrix A and multiply it by one seventh. So we can type in one seventh um, different ways. I'm just gonna put it in parentheses. So one divided by seven, and then to that we're gonna multiply by matrix A. So I go back to the matrix and menu, select matrix A. That's my matrix C here. We're gonna round to the nearest hundredths place. So that is two decimals. Write that down, move along. You might not even have to take notes here. All right, A times D, so go back, select matrix A, go back into that, whoops, and select matrix D. And because they're written next to each other, that means we're multiplying 125, negative 20, 13 is the multiplication of A times D. Okay, this is where it gets a little bit more complicated, um, but it is way less complicated with a calculator than it is um, doing it by hand. So we want to find the inverse of B. So 5A, that annotation B to the negative 1 power, is asking us to find the inverse of B. So we're going to go down to the matrix option. We're going to select matrix B, which is option 2 here. And then we're going to calculate its inverse. So in order to do that, you can either use the caret button over here above the division sign and then raise that to the power of negative one, or we can actually just hit the button without the second that gets us to um, the matrix option. That inverse is for us already. All right, just hit enter. That is the inverse of matrix B. Now, remember by hand, we would have to find the determinant, which is like, multiply the diagonals and subtract, and then you're gonna multiply um, 
1 over the determinant by the matrix where we have to flip A and D and then change the signs of B and C a lot easier on a calculator. So a calculator gets us there a lot faster. So that is the inverse of B. And then the 5B asks us to multiply that inverse by matrix B. So I am going to take that answer and just hit the multiplication. I'm going to go back and I'm going to select matrix B. And so we have the inverse of B times B, and that is the identity matrix, 1, 0, 0, 1. So the identity matrix is that matrix that has ones across the diagonal. Um, and this shows that B and B inverse are actually inverses of one another. They undo each other essentially and give us back the identity matrix. Um, another way we could have done that is we could have used the arrow key on this calculator, gone up, selected that B inverse, and then also gone back to find matrix B and hit enter. Um, different ways to do that on a calculator to get the same values there. All right, last one, number six. We want to solve the system of equations, this time not worrying about real echelon form, but using how we solved um, systems of two by two matrices or two variables um, last time using inverse matrices. I didn't have you guys compute by hand an inverse matrix of a three by three matrix because it, the, I mean, the video would be 30 minutes long on just that. So first thing we need to do is let's write out the equation uh, as a matrix that would represent number six, and then we'll actually use our calculators to solve it. So take a look at number six. If I were to write this as a matrix, uh, making sure that all the variables are lined up, we'd have one, 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 and then three, two, negative one, and then three, one, two. That's our first matrix. We're using inverses here. So that means we'd multiply by the matrix with all the variables, and we set that equal to the solution matrix, which are all the solutions, nine, eight, one. And then using what we know about inverse matrices, we can solve for x by taking the inverse of A and multiplying it by matrix B. Uh, so that's what we're gonna do on our calculator because inverting A by hand, like I said, like so long and something I'm not gonna have you guys try and even do without a calculator. Okay, so let's do that. I've gotta go in and change these matrices and, uh, and kind of edit. So I've gotta get rid of this screen so I can go back to the editing screen. I'm going to go back to matrix and I'm just going to go over and edit A. We're going to change the values. Now A is going to be a three by three now. And uh, across the top, one, one, one. And then three, two, negative one. And then three, one, two. Okay, and then I'm also going to go back in and we need to edit matrix B as well. B this time is going to be a 3 by 1. That's the solution matrix that is 9, 8, 1. Okay, second quit, set your second mode gets us to um, the home screen. And we're just going to solve for x by taking the inverse of matrix A, so matrix A, and then hit the inverse button, and multiplying that by matrix B. Those are our solutions there. x is equal to negative 4.86, y is equal to 12.14, and uh, z is equal to 1.71. That's it. That's all you guys are doing on your homework. So use a calculator, make your life easier. Email me if you've got questions.